Leland Clausen's Comedy Tournament. <laughs> Leland Clausen's comedy time. Okay. Enjoy. It's exciting. Ladies and gentlemen, your host, Leland Clausen. Welcome to the comedy tournament. My name is Leland Clausen. Hello, everybody. We have got another fantastic show for you today. I'm excited. I'm so excited. We're almost, we're almost done. And then I get to fly home and play board games with my kids. I'm excited about that. I don't, here's the thing, I'm getting a little worried about that. Some board games are fine. You play Sorry, you do things like that. It's great. But um, these realistic games, um, I'm starting to mess with my kids' confidence in me. Like the game of life. I keep losing really badly. <laughs> like I'm always destitute. My son is like, you wanna borrow some money? And, and he says it during the game as well. It's just not doing well. It's tough. I don't know, my son, my, son, uh, my oldest son, he wants, a, he wants a dog. He's still bugging me about a dog. He's older now, he said, I want a dog, I want a dog, give me a dog, I want a dog. And I just, I'm not sold on the whole thing. You know what I mean? You, you're chewing on furniture and, and the house smells and he's peeing on the floor. And, and if, he, if he, I don't think he deserves a dog if he doesn't stop doing those things because I. <laughs> All right, well, we've got another bye. The bye, this is the second round, and in the second round, we always have a comic that I put to a bye. When I went on the road, I found these comics, and I said, these four guys deserve a bye into the second round, and this is one of those comics. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy. Tonight's first competitor from Toronto, Ontario, received a bye into the second round, Daniel Woodrow. Daniel Woodrow was on the 2007 comedy tournament, and he was a kid then. Living with his mom. I'm rooming with my competitor, Will Twangstra. So uh, I was kind of scared last night because I he found out he was competing against me, so I thought he was going to try to poison me. I gave Daniel Woodrow a buy because I think he's one of the top guys. It was nice to be able to just sit and watch the competition, essentially. He's been working on comedy. He went he went to Humber the School of, of Comedy. This guy's a contender. He's he can go all the way. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Daniel Woodrow! Uh, so as you can probably tell already, there's obviously something wrong with me. And thank you. And that's that I'm a white man trapped in a black man's body. Uh, it's not my fault. I was raised by white parents, which is great, because it means I didn't get beat as a child. I got grounded. Uh, thank you. I feel like I have a lot of uh, skills that other black people don't have. I can do things they can't do. I can swim, so that's good. Um, thank you. I'm not afraid of dogs, so that works out nicely. Uh, but I wish there was certain things I could do. Like I wish I could shoot a basketball and it actually go in the net. I'd like to feel that. I would like to listen to a Snoop Dogg song and know what he's talking about. <laughs> Still remember the first black person I ever met in my life. He came up, he's like, yo, what's happening, fool? I was like, I'm not a fool. I am not foolish. I am not a fool. He walked away, so that was interesting. That was good. Uh, thank you. That's my life. Thank you. Uh, I was homeschooled as a child, uh, which sucks, because that means you can only be as smart as your mom. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. And my mom is a nice lady. So unless you're a doctor or a teacher, probably don't homeschool your kid or they'll end up doing stand-up in Alberta on a Saturday. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy it, so whatever, it worked out, but uh, it could be a doctor saving lives. Anyways, uh, <laughs> this is my first time in the prairies. I've never been here before. And uh, yeah, it's flat, I guess. Uh, did anyone ever try to run away as a kid? Like, I feel like you can't do that here, because you're like, Where's Daniel? Oh wait, no, I see him. He's almost at Regina. He's almost... No, don't worry, he'll turn around. It's almost dinner time. He's gonna get hungry, he'll come back. 
who loves Taco Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> I feel like it's impossible for criminals here to, like, someone will rob a bank and they try to escape and the cops are like, well, Bill, he's on Highway 1, should we stop him? Or we could go for dinner and get the Manitoba to pull him over tomorrow. No, don't worry, there's no turnoffs or gas stations for hours, don't worry. <laughs> Do you guys uh, have Black History Month here? Or is that... It doesn't sound like it, <laughs> sort of. I know, I feel like it's just three black guys being like, we're so lonely. <laughs> I, I personally think that Black History Month should not be a month long, because that just makes it not special. Like if Halloween was a month long, people would be like, okay, my costume stinks now and I want to go home. I don't even like candy anymore. <laughs> but if Black History Month was one day, I would just get on the bus and be like, no, I'm not paying, and I'm sitting at the front. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's a Rosa Parks joke, thank you. Uh, I grew up in uh, this neighborhood in Ottawa that was kind of rough or whatever. Uh, so I tried to fit in by wearing bling bling. Uh, but I dress the same way I do now, so that does nothing. Uh, it's like putting a cone on a horse's head and be like, check it out guys, real life unicorn right here, just found it. <laughs> We're flying around all morning, but I can't prove it now because he's tired. Uh, <laughs> and there's a good chance you live in a dumb neighborhood when in the bathroom of a pub, there's a sign that says, no drugs allowed in the bathroom. Really, is that going to do anything? No one's going to be like, hey, Bob, I just purchased these drugs in the alley. You want to, oh, there's a sign. Let's go. <laughs> Always follow the rules while doing drugs. <laughs> That's like being like, sorry, sir, this is a no robberies allowed bank. Can't you read? <laughs> Put your gun down and go. Uh, <laughs> yep. I, um, it's going to make me sound weird. I, I am a cat person, I like cats, which is okay, I guess, it's weird. Thank you, other weird cat people. Uh, I understand it's weird, but to me, a dog is like a needy girlfriend. They're like, hey, pay attention to me, hey, look at me, hey, take me for a walk, or I'm gonna poop on your bed, or whatever, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but cats are just cool, they're like, I don't care, do whatever you want, I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> Go ahead and play video games for eight hours, I will literally be here the whole time. The only thing cats really do wrong is they shed, and the older they get, the less they move, so that problem is solved. <laughs> but dogs get weird and lumpy, and you think they're dead every morning when you wake up. <laughs> like, oh no, Ralph's dead. Oh wait, never mind, he got up. Let's go. Come on, Ralph, get up on your three legs and let's go. <laughs> Thank you, dead dog jokes. That's how I win crowds over. That's, a, that's how I do it. Um... I think if I, for some weird reason, had to choose a gang to chase me for the rest of my life, I would choose a biker gang, because they can only go out and do stuff during nice weather, or it's too dangerous, because they're on bikes. <laughs> like, unfortunately, guys, due to light rain, we're going to have to reschedule Daniel's murder. Uh, <laughs> Bill slipped right off his bike last week, and we're not taking that risk again. <laughs> also, I've called cabs so you can all get home safely. <laughs> Thank you. I'm probably going to die for telling a joke one day because I'm going to leave a show and they're going to be like, well, it's sunny now. Bam! And then, I think that's what a gun sounds like. I don't even know. I've never heard one. <laughs> Pew! I don't know. Maybe that's it. I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys even believe that? I don't know if that's... <laughs> probably. I'm wearing a cardigan, so, yeah. You know, usually when people wear cardigans, they've never been around gunshots, so... <laughs> So, like I said before, I have white parents, which is cool, I guess. I got an allowance. That's cool. Uh, and I used to think that they would like to give me joke gifts because they're like, he's funny, we're funny, whatever. Uh, but then I realized it's just because they're cheap. Like, when I thought back to it, like, one year I asked for a, a ring for Christmas. I don't know, I wanted to be a king or something. I was eight. Uh, and they handed me a ring box, and inside was just a marble. Uh, not even a good one. It was chipped. Like, I don't even... I just found it on the ground. <laughs> Another year I asked for a car and they handed me an envelope with car keys inside and a note that says, now all I need to do is buy a car. Uh, which is fine, because a week later I crashed their car and left a note that said, ditto. So, uh, I believe I won on that one. Thank you, Alberta. I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you much. Daniel Woodrow, everybody. Keep it going for Daniel Woodrow. 
Here, can you do that? Yeah. I'm going to move it over here. All right. See, I'm so awkward. It's, yes, it's I'm uncom- awkward, too. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> okay. Judges, what do you got for us? <laughs> well, that's probably good that they're still laughing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a good that's sign. Good. I think I, I, good. Uh, So, now, were you adopted? Uh, uh, this is a long story. Uh, my real mom is white. She raised me. My stepdad is also white. Married her. White family. Okay. <laughs> 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 So, yes, half, sort of. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Well, tell, <laughs> tell us that in the act. Um, no, that man, I, I, you had good stuff. Your homeschool joke killed me, the no robberies allowed, just really good material. Thanks. Very likable and uh, very believable, you know, so good stuff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bone, what do you got for us? Daniel, you got one of them gifts that we all wish we had in comedy. You don't even have to say nothing. <laughs> Crazy hair? What was that? Because uh, you I, I, look I, I, funny. Bro, I, don't, I don't know if that's So fair. when you come to the microphone and you say, I'm sure you can tell something wrong with me, it like release some tension. It was like, yeah, okay, so we can laugh at that? Okay, I thought it'd be rude. The best and, 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 and your delivery, you work your voice in a way, I don't even know if the audience knew that you was working it because they was just laughing it. You worked it. To where we always talk about there are some comics they just say things funny even before it's even funny or they do something to make it funny and you just would say stuff like you're no robberies alert <laughs> <laughs> just the way you say it no robberies allowed here that was just funny hearing you say it and then uh, uh, adding to it it's funny it made it so easy and um i i can say this they, they can't say it they might be thinking it but the fact that you were talking about you was raised from a white family, but you still sound like you're a black dude, that really works for you. It <laughs> really does. Thank so we're not looking at you and be like, he don't even know how to deal with black folks. He don't sound like that. So when you say your jokes about, I don't know what Snoop mean, I ain't never heard a gunshot, it makes it okay for everybody to laugh because it's like, yeah, but look at his hair. I think he, he's still black. That's a black <laughs> dude right there. Great job, Daniel. Great job, man. Thank you very much, bro. Thank you. Yeah. Darren. Terrific stuff. That was really funny. I, uh, I think it's great. I, I, you, 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 you walk a dangerous line a little bit because you're talking about some, so, some issues that uh, are, are really causing trouble, you know, in, in society. But I think you're one of the few people in the world that can talk about these issues on both sides of the fence. You could bring some healing with your comedy. Get them to the UN. Yes. So I, I am excited world. to see where you're going to go with what you're doing. I think you're fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Thank you very much, judges. Thank you very much, Daniel Woodrow. And we'll be back after this. Welcome back. I don't know, life isn't always rosy for me, just so you know. I'm just going to throw it out there. I get stressed, I get down, but I'm being positive these days. Not negative, my dad was negative, negative guy. So negative, my dad. I'll give you an example. I went, to, went off to college when I was just you know, out of high school, went to college, met a gal, nice gal. We were dating and stuff. I remember talking to my dad on the phone about her. And uh, this is how negative he was. I was talking to him, dad, you met a great gal, she's fantastic. Oh yeah, well you don't have a job, do you? <laughs> That's what he said. He's like, I'm in college, what do you want? It's not that fast. Later on, I finished college, got a great job. So I call him up, I'm like, Dad, yeah, working, working that job you were talking about, it's going great. Yeah, and I got no one to share with, do you? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Finally, still working the job. It was a great job, I was really happy there. Met the lady who I knew I was gonna, I was gonna spend the rest of my life with. Fell in love, I was like, this is the one I know. I brought her home to even meet the parents. I was like, Dad, hey, got the job. Here's the gal I know I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with. And he's like, yeah, now you got nothing to look forward to, do ya? <laughs> anyway, folks, you have something to look forward to, and that is the second part of our round two battle tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's watch the screen. Enjoy this. Our second competitor defeated Wayne Dahl in round one, Will Twinstra. Will Tanacula Tanisha t- Will T. Will sort of strikes me as someone you find being held in a cell at Area 51. He, he was different. He, he was 
something different. I mean, I grew up with Mexicans. I ain't never met a... See, I can't even say it. What is that, Dutchkin? I guess that's unique in Canada. Like, you know, California. It's like Dutchkins are all over the place. I just need to know, can he make some tamales for me in Christmas? That's all I'm really concerned about. Maybe he'll be big in Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for Will Twinstrom. Hello, everybody. Ah, good to be here. I am going to uh, do a little something called beatnik comedy for you. It requires me to use a harmonica. Don't quite know how to use a harmonica, but I'm going to try anyway. Pick one up here today. Interestingly enough, it says victory on it. <laughs> Made in Christ. No, wait, China. Made in China. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, that's good too. Let's try this. All right. There's a man on my street and he walks every day. He is 87 years old. That is awesome. So I can wait until I'm old to exercise. <laughs> the 30s are for lazy people. I have trouble spelling properly, which is weird because it's not that hard of a word. Properly. <laughs> Sounds so simple. P-R-O-P-Q-U-E. See what I mean? <laughs> I'm not a big fan of voting. We seem to vote like every six months in this country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so in the last election I decided the party with the most uh, lawn signs gets my vote. I voted Remax. The price of gas is going up. I know this because the burritos at Taco Bell just went up 25 cents. I've been going to a gym lately, and I feel so much better doing it. Actually, his full name is Jim Truman. He owns the hot dog stand outside the Canadian Tire. Super nice guy. I'm going to get a membership. I don't believe in stereotypes. I prefer MP3 players. <laughs> and I believe in taxing the rich. Unless I make a million dollars. <laughs> then that would suck. <laughs> they say if you tell people what they want to hear, that they will like you better. I told my parents I was adopted. It worked. I love it when people tell you a really long, boring story and finish it with the words, true story, as if I wouldn't believe it in the first place. I like to tell a long, boring story and finish it with the words, not true. I went to the store today and bought a big bag of milk, not true. I met a man, he said he was from Wales. I said, that's amazing. You hear about people being raised by wolves all the time, but Wales, that's different. I like phrases like the one, the early bird catches the worm. Yeah, so I got up at 5.30 in the morning and sure enough, there was a bird eating a worm. Cool. Well, what's that got to say about the worm? Go back to bed, or you're dead. <laughs> I sleep in now. <laughs> I went by the Levi store, and there was a big banner outside that said, Levi's Big Tent Sale. Hmm, I didn't even know Levi's made tents. <laughs> I've always wanted to go camping in a tent made of denim, classic stitching, and a button fly. Yeah, those Levi's people are hip. I would hate to get into a fight with an animal on the endangered list. That is a lose-lose situation in my books. Because if I won, I would feel really guilty. But if I lost, well then I'd be known as the guy who lost to an animal that seven billion other people have managed to endanger. <laughs> 
The other day I was driving down the street, and right in front of me there was the most incredible rainbow. And behind it, the sky was the most intense blue that I had ever seen in my entire life. And then there were birds flying everywhere. And then there were these zebras. And there was this alligator standing on its hind legs, laughing his head off. And that's when I realized I was about to hit the big mural wall outside the daycare center. <laughs> It was my friend's birthday, so I decided I wanted to get him something really special. So I went to the Christian bookstore and I bought him the gift of prophecy. I knew he didn't have it already because when he opened it, he was genuinely surprised. Unfortunately, in his excitement, he fell off his chair and broke his leg. I should have bought him the gift of healing too. I am having so much fun at the comedy tournament. I really like the judges. I hope they pick Daniel Woodrow. Not true. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Will Twyster, everybody. Will Twyster. All right, judges. What can you tell us? Well, well, you're you're a good comedian. You're a very, very good comedian. Um, very different than what you did uh, previous show. Very, very different. Bit of strategy going into that. I, yeah. I I toured with uh, with Daniel this whole week, so I kind of knew his style. So I wanted to show a little diversity as well as go up against what I've known from Daniel. Okay. Okay. Um, but and that and I yeah I'm just I'm I, I understand. I get it. I get it. Um, but I, but I liked you know it's like I liked the, the guy that you did last thing I, that's the guy I like I wanted to see more of him. I, I and, got lots more yeah. Yeah, so you should, yeah and <laughs> not that I don't like this uh, you know your uh, your your beatnik kind of character, but um, you know I just I wanted to see more of that Dutchkin. Okay, dude. Yeah. You know yeah. more of the so, Dutchkin. The Dutch. Thanks, Bone. What do you got? Uh, <clears throat> well, hearing your response to that, one thing that I would always say, Will. When you're in a competition, never make your set a reaction to what you think the guy you're going against. Okay. Because you are who you are, and you do you great. And so always do you, and you can live and die with whatever the consequences are because you know you did you. Right. It's an awkward feeling if you react to them, and then it doesn't go the way you want it to go because now you're wondering, well, what if I would have did me? So always do you, because you showed us last show that you were on, that you're a great comedian. So trust that. Okay. Now, there was really nothing necessarily wrong with doing this character as well. Whenever you're doing um, what I, I look at it as a one-line comic, you take a risk of every time you get momentum going, you have to start over again. Yeah. When you did the Dutch again yesterday, once we were into the Dutch again, all you had to do was just keep hitting that animal, and we was like, yes, because we love it. You hit a line on this show that would be hilarious and then lose all the momentum because you change the subjects right away. And it's like, do you know how hard it is to just hit, 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 hit with something different? So you can do it, but just understand that's a lot of work on you that to me is it's just a choice if that's what you choose to do. Yeah. I, 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 I really liked how you ended. That was re really nice and in the moment. It was great. Um, uh, I, I think, yeah, you're one of the few people I've seen that can do one-liner comedy. You can do it. Uh, you, the the punchlines are strong enough that you can do it. I, I think uh, sa save the punchlines for in the middle of runs of what you, you normally do. I think, I think it's... Uh, uh, you have a rare gift of being able to write really funny stuff, so I, I would keep it within the c content of your other stuff. But uh, this was really funny, but like Bone says, it's a momentum thing. Right. Uh, so, uh, but great stuff, man. I laughed all the way through it. Great stuff, judges. Thank you very much. Thank and you. thank you, Will Twyster. Right. We'll be back after this to find out who won. <laughs> Welcome back to the comedy tournament. We've had Will Twinstra here. We've got Daniel Woodrow here. 
And now we've got the judges over there. What do you guys uh, let us know? Who's, who's going home? Who, who won? Well, you're, you're killing us, Leland, by making us choose. I'm sorry. You know, every show it gets tougher and tougher. And, you, you know, you, we have a friendship, but I think the three of us here are kind of like, I, we, you're losing us, buddy. You're losing us. <laughs> you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make, make it all right. I'm going to leave tonight. <laughs> Now, it's very tough again because, um, you know, we, we, we like them both very, very much and think they're both very good comics who have yeah. huge potential. So we just want to emphasize that again. But uh, tonight... Tonight, um, the winner is, um, Daniel, you need to get yourself a new cardigan because you're coming back, sir. Daniel, we'll go. congratulations, my friend. Great job. Will, super job, man. Very funny, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time on the Comedy Tournament. Next time on Leland Clausen's Comedy Tournament, round two continues with Matt Falk and Dan Taylor. See you then. I had a good vibe out there, so fortunately not exactly what the uh, judges were looking for. I uh, got some good feedback from them. Can't do uh, much more than that. I feel pretty good. It was a... Uh... I mean, I hate that I had to knock someone out that, uh, that is a friend of mine, but I guess that's how it, how it works. So I'm pretty happy that I won. Anybody got a stage for me? I'll take it.